Today we are learning about concentration and solubility, uh, finishing up our lesson from last class. You can find the pages that you need to read on pages 24 to 28 of your textbook. Essential questions, what is concentration? What is solubility? There's the pages in your textbook. So you need to be able to define a solute. A solute is the substance that dissolves for example, juice crystals in water. The solvent is the dissolving substance. For example, the hot water for hot chocolate, dissolving the powder. So the solute, you're going to dissolve the solute in the solvent. With orange juice, if you made orange juice from concentrate, the concentrate has a large amount of orange solids or solute and a small amount of water, solvent. You add water to make a diluted solution. A diluted solution has a small amount of solute in the solvent, but you need to be able to calculate concentration. Concentration is the amount of solute in the solvent. So if I had 50 grams of a substance per 100 milliliters of water, it would mean it had 50% solute. That's how concentrated it is. One jar had 10 grams of salt per 100 milliliters, while another jar had 20 grams of salt per 100 milliliters. Which one is more concentrated? 10 grams per 100 milliliters is 10%. 20 grams per 100 milliliters is 20%. So 20 grams is more concentrated. We compared concentration. So if you have two solutions, solution A has 15 grams of salt in 50 milliliters of water, and solution B has 25 grams of salt in 100 milliliters of water, which one is more concentrated? Concentration can be expressed as a percent. If I write my fractions out of 100, it's very clear what the percent is without using a calculator. So I have. 15 over 50 and 25 over 100. I want to make both solutions out of 100. 50 times what is 100? 50 times 2. What I do to the bottom fraction, I do to the top. 15 times 2 is 30. So I have 30 out of 100 or 30 percent and 25 out of 100 or 25 percent. So the 15 grams in 50 milliliters is more concentrated than 25 grams in 100. Next slide, what if I have 10 grams of salt in 50 milliliters of water and 25 grams in 100 milliliters of water? Same thing, which solution is the most concentrated? I need to change these so they're both out of 100. So I'm going to times by two again, 50 times two to make the fraction out of 100, 10 times two. I have 20 over 100 versus this should be 25 over 100, 20% 20 and 25%. So the 25 grams of salt in 100 milliliters is more than the 10 in 50 because this is a concentration of 20%. This is a concentration of 25% right here. That is all review from last class. Now you're going to pause the video and answer the following questions. Calculate the concentration in grams per 100 milliliters for the following. Six grams of maple syrup in 25 milliliters of water. 24 grams 
of sugar in 200 milliliters of water and 10 grams of sugar in 50 milliliters of water. Pause the video and calculate. Okay, so you should set up three fractions, six grams over 25 milliliters, 24 grams over 200 milliliters, 10 grams over 50 milliliters. I need to make these so they're all out of 100. So 25, I'm going to times by four. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. That will give me my fraction. So six times four is 24, 24 out of 100 or 24%. 24 over 200 is too large. I need to make it up 100, so I'm going to divide by 2. Divide by 2. 12 over 100 or 12%. And lastly, 10 grams over 50 milliliters. I'm going to multiply by 2 to get to 100. 50 times 2 is 100. What I do to the bottom, I do to the top. And my last percentage is 20% or 20 over 100. So solution b is the most concentrated has the highest percentage of solute last two slides you will need to be able to define unsaturated and a saturated solution. You will need to refer to your textbook to answer those questions on the assignment. But an unsaturated solution is one in which more solute can be added. It's not saturated enough. As long as juice crystals keep dissolving, it is unsaturated. We'll look at, can we keep adding more and more salt to water? Is there a limit where it will no longer dissolve? Yes, eventually the salt will just sit there in the water. When it can no longer dissolve, we can say it has reached the saturation point. And lastly, a saturated solution, a solution in which no more solute will dissolve. So a practical example is with paper towels wiping up a water spill. There is a point when the paper will no longer absorb any more moisture. You need to get more paper towel. We can say it has reached its saturation point. Review that in your textbook, pages 24 to 28 in order to answer the questions on your 2.2 solubility assignment.